Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so initially I wasn't planning to do a video about this because when I first saw this these report like this this article, I was like, oh, there's not enough information here. I don't actually have a Maximus Z690 Hero in hand, so um, yeah, I can't really you know add any extra useful information to this discussion. But recently, more people have picked up picked up on this. There's a video from Jay's Two Cents about this, um, and then also on Reddit. You know, like, somebody posted, uh, nine hours ago, another picture of a blown-up hero, and so, here we are, we're, we're gonna actually talk about this. I've actually noticed something very, very strange about these motherboards. Like, I, I'm 99% certain I know why some of these boards are blowing up. Um, I might be wrong about that. Like, my 99% certainty doesn't mean that I'm actually correct, but... There's a very suspicious feature of the motherboards that have blown up, and other non-blown up motherboards. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, well, I wish, I wish I had the board in hand because this, this is such a, this would be so easy to check if I had one of these motherboards. Um, if I had a dead one or a working one, this would be super, super easy to check because if I'm correct about why these are failing, it's, it's such a dumb, dumb cause of failure. But anyway, let's get into this. So basically, uh, some people who buy Maxima Z690 motherboards eventually have these two MOSFETs. I'm assuming they're, mo yeah, they're MOSFETs. I'm 99% I'm certain these are MOSFETs because they're labeled PQ, which is the uh, silk screening for, for MOSFETs and transistors. So these are, these are MOSFETs, and these MOSFETs just burn up. And after they burn up, your motherboard's gonna... Or even before they burn up, like, basically the issue is some people get a motherboard that doesn't burn up and they get a code 53 and the memory doesn't turn on because basically code 53 means that there's no memory being detected. And generally speaking, the easiest way to cause that, especially considering we have pictures of motherboards looking that like this, is to me that says the memory VRM isn't turning on. Uh, now, these MOSFETs are not part of the memory power delivery as far as I'm aware because uh, the memory VRM is this down here. That's these two big ones over here. So the 4C10B there and this one. Uh, so that's the actual memory VRM. This is our input filtering inductor. And then we have this like mix of MOSFETs up here, which doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. But uh, these all seem to be connected to five volts. And I'm assuming that they're used for like power distribution slash power sequencing. So basically they're just connecting five volts to different things. And they're there so that you have the option to like disconnect five volts from whatever it is that they're connecting it to. Now, uh, if these short out and like fail, then uh, your 5 volts is likely to get just pulled straight to zero, and when that happens, your memory VRM won't turn on because there's no power going into it. Um, so that's my theory on why you get a error 53. Now, uh, why you get the error 53 on the, these boards when they fail. Um, now, why do they fail? So a lot of people might be immediately going like, oh, it's because the MOSFETs, like, the MOSFETs are burning up. That's, that's why this fails. Well, yes, but why, why do the MOSFETs burn up? Because these, like, these are probably power distribution slash power sequencing. They really shouldn't be getting hot. They're not switching on and, like, I'm assuming they're not switching on and off. Why would these burn up? Well, uh, there's an interesting thing that I've noticed about these Z690 Maximus, uh, hero boards. So, um, on Reddit, somebody posted this picture. Well, okay, no, let's take a look at the, the board that Jay's Two Cents has. So this is a picture of Jay's Two Cents board. And you'll notice that this capacitor has the polarity stripe on this side, right? And then if we look at this exploded motherboard, the polarity stripe is on the other side, which doesn't make any sense if you think about it, because it's a polarized capacitor. It only goes one way, right? Like either the PCB layout is different, which would mean Asus has two different PCB revisions floating around of this board already, or one of these pictures has the capacitor backwards. And if that capacitor back is backwards, that is very bad because uh, to, you know, we have some, uh, like this is just some documentation from Vichy on polymer aluminum capacitors, which this very much is. That looks like a Panasonic SP cap to me. Uh, there's also this picture from somebody else, which uh, I don't recognize this manufacturer. Um, like I'm actually not sure who uses this. Like, I think it's a Kemet, uh, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which manufacturer uses this marking, uh, like th this style of uh, capacitor marking. This looks like Panasonic to me. Um, but anyway, this one has the polarity stripe on the same side as the Jay -Z uh, Jay's Two Cents uh, capacitor. Um, and anyway, now if you get these backwards, and these are all polymer aluminum capacitors, a conductive polymer capacitor is a solid aluminum electrolytic uh, capacitor with a positive and negative with positive and negative electrodes, right? So. There's a positive end and there's a negative end. 
Make sure of the polarity. If it is used in reverse polarity, leakage current will increase and the lifespan may decrease. In other words, if you put these backwards, um, there's going to be potentially quite a lot of current flowing through that capacitor, which you're not supposed like, that's bad. That'll just destroy the capacitor pretty quickly. But if there's quite a lot of current flowing through our capacitor because it's backwards, and that capacitor is seemingly connected to these two MOSFETs, um, that capacitor could potentially pull enough current that it blows up those two MOSFETs. Like, if those two MOSFETs have more resistance to them than this capacitor, then they're going to burn up, right? Because, like, you're going to... Most of the heat dissipation happens in the component where you get the largest voltage drop. So if these have significantly more resistance than that capacitor, and that capacitor is, like, backwards um, and pulling a lot of current, those two MOSFETs are burning out. Um, or just one of them, right? Like the all of the failed motherboards there are, like here. So again, we have the polarity stripe on what I'm assuming is the wrong side. And if you had one of these motherboards in hand, this would be trivial to check. You would literally just have to take a multimeter and measure if this side of the capacitor is ground or if it's five volts. While the, like ideally, you'd want to do this while while the motherboard is running. Um, that would that would make the check uh, check well. Yeah, um, anyway, so this one's backwards and we have a blown up MOSFET. This one's backwards, we have a blown up MOSFET. This one's back, uh, like, this one's also backwards, we can't see the polarity such ripe, so I'm assuming it's backwards. We have two blown up MOSFETs, uh, backwards, blown up MOSFETs. So, I'm starting to think that, like, Asus had a batch of boards where, like, they loaded the capacitors into the pick-and-place machine backwards, and they just made a bunch of backwards motherboards. And those are now blowing up, is, is my guess as to what's happening. Because it doesn't, like, this doesn't make sense. Unless they have two different PCB designs floating around, every single motherboard should have the capacitor in the same orientation. Like, the fact that there's two different orientations is already, like, that. that is, like, no, that doesn't make any sense. This is a polarized capacitor. It goes one way unless the PCB is different. And, like, so, you know, so th this board hasn't exploded. Jay's two cents board hasn't exploded. Both of these boards, like, you know, at the same time, like, it takes a while, okay? Like, the leakage current will increase and lifespan may decrease. Like, this takes a while. It isn't instant. Um, unless you also, like, significant, like significantly overvolt the capacitor. So, um, yeah, putting capacitors backwards is bad. Um, very, very bad. I'm surprised this didn't get ca caught in, like... Like, they should be doing automatic, like, visual inspection. Um, I would assume that it could pick up on capacitor polarity, right? Like, that's a pretty big stripe on there. Um, but, uh... Yeah, like every single exploded motherboard I've seen seems to have the polarity stripe on the on the wrong end of that capacitor. Um, and so, yeah, like this this one's really burnt out and that cap is definitely backwards. Um, or like, well, I'm saying definitely backwards. Like within my knowledge, that cap is very much backwards. And then you don't get your memory power because your memory power is getting its power supply shorted to ground. So yeah, of course the board's not going to turn on. Um, man, I wish I had one of these motherboards. Because like, regardless of if you have a working one or a dead one, um, and there should be a PCB revision number somewhere on the PCB. So literally if somebody takes one of these boards and just checks like, if this, like, what side of this capacitor is connected to ground and which one is connected to voltage, and I'm assuming it's 5 volts in this case, but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but, you know, you just need to check which way this capacitor is oriented and then check your PCB revision. And if you have the same PCB revision as as whoever did the actual voltage check and your cap is, doesn't line up for that voltage check, like, yeah, it's, it's going to blow up probably eventually. So, um... Yeah, I wonder how many boards they made with this. Because I'm guessing they just loaded the components backwards. Because <laughs> it doesn't make any other sense. Uh, like, there's no other way that it makes sense. Like, you wouldn't... This, this isn't... This is a capacitor. Like, you're not going to get this wrong, and you're not going to get two different configurations as well, right? Like, we have two pictures um, of the board where the, the capacitor has is obviously the other way around. And then all the exploded boards have it the other way around. So I'm I'm really thinking that yeah they they just loaded and they loaded these capacitors into the machine backwards, and then the machine just built a bunch of motherboards with the cap backwards, and now those are failing. Um, I really wish I had one of these boards on hand to verify my theory, but like 
unless again, like unless there's two different PCB designs of this motherboard floating around, that cap should always be in the same direction. Always. It should never be in any other direction. Like there's a capacitor. It goes correct. Like it goes on the motherboard one way. Um, incidentally, I've actually also accidentally put capacitors backwards um, onto uh, stuff. And they get really hot when you do that. Um, polymers do. Yeah, they get really, really hot. Like, I put a 2.5 volt polymer onto a, I think, a Vega. And I put it backwards on V-Core. So that was just, like, 1 volt going into it. But it was hot enough that I noticed that it was overheating just by, like, having my hot hand near the card after running it. Um... So yeah, if you if you put the so like they pull quite a bit of current if you put them backwards and yeah then it'll burn up the MOSFETs. Once the MOSFETs burn up, the the whole board just sort of stops uh, functioning properly. Um, and if you know if the MOSFETs get burn like you know burn up hard enough, then you eventually also get like apparently some people have had fire almost starting in this area of the board. So that's obviously not great. But I'm I'm guessing they just put the cap backwards. So. Anyway, um, man, I wish I had one of these boards right now. See, if, if Asus sent me review samples, I could tell them what they screwed up ahead of time. <laughs> like, it would have been immediately obvious when I first saw these pictures, because I saw these, like, the first time I saw these pictures, I didn't know there was another orientation for that capacitor whatsoever. And unfortunately, the silk screening is just, like, you can't really see it, right? Like, yeah, well... No, I, the thing is, this, the silk screening is really isn't very clear, unless this stripe right here, right, like, you have the second stripe over here, unless that's supposed to be the polarity indication on the board, in which case that cap is so backwards. I mean, you can't really be less, more or less backwards, but yeah, like, if, if that right there, if that stripe um, right here between those two MOSFETs is the polarity indicator, then that cap very backwards, and this motherboard... Hasn't burnt up yet, but probably will, because that cap is backwards, and backwards capacitors don't work. Like, th th you're, yeah. Anyway, um, so that's my thoughts on this. Um, and I could be wrong, right? I could be wrong, and Asus does have two different PCB revisions floating around, and one of them has the ca capacitor one way, and the other has the capacitor the other way. Uh, or I'm correct, and they loaded a, like, they, they loaded one of the machine, like, the pick-and-place machine got loaded wrong. So, yeah, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Um, I guess go check if your motherboard has the cap the right way around. Or if you've got a multimeter and you're not, ter like, you know, and you know how to use it, you can literally go, uh, what you can do is, like, you can measure ground, so you would put your black probe on the screw for, like, the standoff, and then put the red probe on this side of the capacitor. If there's voltage on that side of the capacitor, and the capacitor has the polarity stripe the other way around, and by when I say voltage, you need more than like, like let's say there's more than a volt, right? Let's say there's more than like one volt on this side of the capacitor. Um, yeah, your cap is backwards. Very much backwards. There's no way there's supposed to be a volt on this side of that capacitor. Um, anyway, um, there, that's... That's it for for this video. Um, it's a horrible rambly mess, but I mean, I just woke up like an hour ago, so I don't know what you expect from me. Um, and also, I'm a little bit too excited about the fact that I've noticed that these capacitors just seem to change orientation at random, which is not a good thing. Like, that, it's not okay, unless the PCB is also changing randomly. Um, and, uh, yeah, so hopefully, like... Like, this would be relatively easy to fix. Like, Asus could just recall the boards and just switch out the capacitors that they installed backwards. Well, easy fix. Um, that's, that's, that's not really that... Like, if you think about the logistics of that, not really an easy fix. But, honestly, if you had one of these boards that is affected, like, I could fix this. Like, I, I could... Well, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily be able to fix the burn damage on the motherboard. But the capacitor being backwards, that's actually really easy to fix. Um... Might melt the dim slot in the process, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I am really, really surprised that that, like, that seems to, like, that, uh, I'm, I'm really, 
yeah, anyway, end of video. Thanks for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.